I'm gonna talk about Vaughn Villebrand brand Vaughn Villebrand disease. Okay, guys. So let's talk a brief discussion on this and important points for USMLE or MLCPCH or any of the board examinations. So let's start a discussion on this. It's a remember in USMLE. If they give the child presenting with uh, what you call uh, epistaxis and he has a normal platelet count, epistaxis, okay, normal platelet count, okay, and prolonged raised bleeding time, then try to think of, think of, think of VWD, that's a bone villebrand disease, okay, guys. So, usually this the kind of what you call case scenario in USMLE. So it's a most common hereditary bleeding disorder. Okay, and it's an autosomal dominant. Remember, it's an autosomal dominant, and the chromosome associated is a chromosome 12. Okay, and there is a deficiency of the factor 8R. Okay. Okay. Right? One will brand is a factor 8R. Remember. What's the pathophysiology? There's a defective plate function, platelet function due to decrease in the level or function of bone villebrand factor. So platelet function is defective because of this loss of this or absence of bone villebrand factor. Okay. So there will be three types. One is a type one, type two, and a type three. Okay, in a type 1, there will be low levels of one bilirubin factor, okay, and a factor 8. Low levels, okay, and in type 2, there is an abnormal one bilirubin factor, and type 3 is may have total absence of one bilirubin factor. It's a low levels, it's a total absent, okay, total absent, right? Got it? Okay, what are the signs and symptoms? But remember, in any clotting or a bleeding disorder, what you should remember is the factors and the how do you diagnose it and the treatment, okay? Rather than signs and symptoms. The signs and symptoms, patient will have easy bruising, okay? Then they have what you call in the females, they might have what you call experience prolonged menstruation. Okay, epistaxis, as I said, and soon after the surgery or any trauma, they will have excessive bleeding. Excessive bleeding. Okay, so what's the diagnostic? Test or what are the diagnosis? How do we make a diagnosis? Remember the laboratory changes in these patients will they will have what you call increased A P T T okay and the bleeding time will be also increased remember okay and there will be abnormal factor eight clotting activity abnormal Factor eight activity, okay, and reduced. Very important is the reduced resto setting. Resto setting cofactor activity. Okay, this is really very important. Reduced distress in cofactor activity and the platelet aggregation, platelet aggregation will be abnormal. Remember, okay, but the count, the count of platelets 
will be normal that's really very important you should look for okay so how do you treat it treatment is avoid the trauma then desmopressin can be given desmopressin okay and you can replace with a factor 8 okay right and cryo precipitate cryo precipitate okay right so these are the important things that you should know and remember always try to avoid because in your seminary they will ask you they will give the classical lab findings of one blood brand disease and ask you which of the following drug is contraindicated or should not be used in these patients so remember it's a aspirin and NSAIDs okay aspirin and NSAIDs aspirins and NSAIDs okay so thank you so much for watching this video take care